Okay, this is a typical scenario. It's homework, and homework is a chance for you to try doing what we've um, what we do in class. Now, these are review problem sets. We're not really doing these in class. It's a review what you've done, Math 06, 07. It's important you do work at home, though. And what does that mean? Study time, reading, um, trying to understand what the teacher presented to you, and working problems, all right? It's really that important, all right? What I'm going to do is I'll work these problems for you, and I'll do one at a time. So, for example, the, one, the first one says convert 6% to a fraction. Well, 6% means 6 out of 100. That's certainly a fraction, but they did say reduce it. Now, if I'm going to reduce that, I would say 3 over 50. What am I doing? I'm dividing top and bottom by 2. We see the answer over here. All right? This one says evaluate. And again, very similar to what was in the, uh, the examples that we provide for this. And that's very typical of the notes, by the way. What you see in the homework is just a, re, um, a rehash of what you did in the examples. So let's write this down. So it's 3.58 times minus 1.026. Now, I do know that's a negative number. Now I'm going to do the multiplication for you. I'm going to write down as you did in grade school, by the way. And what you did was you just put the numbers down with the decimal point in it. And another one was 3.58. Let me go through the multiplication for you. And I'm just reviewing what you've done in grade school. Now, you are allowed to use calculators in uh, Math 100, although that may change. I don't think it's really needed to use calculators or something like this. However, I do know for a lot of students, arithmetic is a very tedious process, also prone to error. Let's take a look. And I'm going to do the multiplication. 8 times 6 is 48. I'll carry the 4. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. I'll carry the 2. <coughs> 8 times 0 is 0. Well, 0 plus 2 is 2. And then 8 times 1 is 8. I'm going to erase my carry, and I'm going to do the next one. What's the next one going to be? Well, I'll put a 0 down. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, 5 times 6 is 30. I'll carry. 5 times 2 is uh, 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. I'll carry. 5 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 5 times 1 is 5. I'm going to do the 3 now. That's two zeros now. And let's take a look. This is what you did in grade school, by the way. Let's do the multiplication now. Well, 3 times 6 is 18. Let's see. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 3 times 0 is 0. And 3 times 1 is 3. A little line over here. 8, 0, 13. I'll do a little carry there. Uh, let's see, 10, 17, do a little carry there, 6, 3. Let's count the places. How many are there? What I mean by that, I'm counting these decimal places over here. There's five of them, all right? So I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I get an answer. I'll write it down for you, 3.67308. I, again, I, you know, I, I can't say this enough times. Please look at the key to make sure you're getting the same answer. If you're not, though, maybe I made a mistake. I make mistakes all the time, by the way. All right? So let me go to the next question. It should be relatively simple. It says convert the uh, fraction, which is a mixed number. Five, uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have called it a fraction. It's a mixed number. It's five, a whole number, and a fraction, three sevens. So we convert to an improper fraction. So I'm going to say really what it means. It means five plus three sevens. And again, I'm going to put this on a little differently than maybe your teachers did in grade school. This is 7 over 7. That's a builder. Plus 3 over 7. What do you get there? 35 sevens plus 3 sevens. And that would be 38 sevens. I'm going to see that there. I want to tell you what you were told in grade school, which is fine to do, by the way. Your teacher told you to do 7 times 5, which is 35. And 35 plus 3 is 38. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. We're actually doing that over here. You just may not realize it. All right, 38 sevens. This one's a, you know, a multiplication problem, but they want me to reduce it. So I'll write this down, minus. I know it's a negative number, and I'll go through some reductions over here. I notice a 9 goes into 9 once, and it goes into 27 three times. And 2 goes into 2 once, and it goes into 8 four times. So we're left off with, those slashes mean 1. So I'm left off with 1 on top, because 1 times 1 is 1. And on bottom, I'm left with 3 times 4, which is 12. So it's minus 1 12. All right? Let's do this one over here. It's simplify. There are a bunch of terms there. What do you get? Well, I'm going to go left to right. 2 plus or minus 5 is minus 3. And again, I'm going to just write this down. Again, you can do it quicker. I'm just going to write everything down. Now, minus or minus 3 is plus 3. Let me keep going. Minus 3 minus 7 is minus 10. Minus 10 plus 6 is going to be minus 4. And minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1. 
Again, we give you answers for a reason. We want you to use them and check them. Okay, this one says a rectangle is an area of 24 square inches. I'm going to just remind me what a rectangle looks like, this over here. I know the area is 24 square inches. It says if the length of the rectangle is 8 inches, this is 8 inches, what they say is what's the width? I have no idea. We'll put this down. That's their question. What is this over here? Well, what I know, I know 8 times W, the length times the width, is 24. So now I know W is going to be 3 inches. All right, let's do this one over here. It's an equation to solve. I would subtract 3x from both sides, and I would subtract 9 from both sides. And what would you get? Let's put this over here. You would get, let's see, minus 13 equals x. So x is minus 13. All right, let's do this one over here. It's a division problem. We're dividing by a monomial. So I'm going to write it down as 5x squared divided by 5x minus 25x divided by 5x plus 30 divided by 5x. And we're just going to do each term separately. And what do I get for the first term? Well, 5 divided by 5, it's 1. And there's two factors of x on top and one factor of x on bottom. So I just get 1x for the first term. What do I get for the second term? I would get minus 5. Again, why is that? 5 goes into minus 25. I'm sorry. 5 goes into 5 5 times, and the x's cancel. Last but not least, that does reduce. And what do you get? 6, because 5 does go into 36 times over x. And that's my answer. Let's look at the k, and I'm seeing that in the k. Okay, let's take a look at this one over here. Again, the way you do it, the way I do it, may look a little different, but I'm going to put the number down. What do I say? Well, I'm seeing a minus 16 times a minus 3 eighths, and then I do see an x squared over here. Now, someone says, why do you do that, or do you need to do that? Well, I don't really need to do that, but I think it's a good idea to understand what we're doing over here. I'm going to say there's a cancellation. 8 goes in 8 once, and it goes into 16 twice. So what he left off with, minus 2 times minus 3 which is 6, and you get an x squared. Now, if you can look at that and write that down quickly, I would actually recommend that. All right, this one says Alex has $340 into the $600 checking account. If he deposits, well, let's write this down. He has $340.56 in checking, and he deposits $92.18. And then what does he do? He writes checks. Well, he's removing money from the account, and he removes $3607. And he removes 142.50. And then what's the question? What's the balance? Well, let me write this down for you. And again, it's an arithmetic problem. And it's, yeah, balancing a checkbook, so to speak. And you get 92.18. I'm going to add that together. These are the uh, the original deposit. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the original balance, and then, then he deposits 92.18 in it. Well, 8 and 6 is 14. I'll carry the 1. And 1 in 5 is 6 and gets 7. Not so bad. And then you get 2. 9 and 4 is 13. Carry the 1. And you get 432.74. All right, so I got 432.74. And that's what I have in the bank. And then I come along and I'm going to write two checks. And I'm going to write that down now. I'm going to add those two checks up for you. 3607. And the other check was 142.50. Well, this looks pretty easy to add together. What do you get? 7, 5, 8, 7, 1. So what am I going to do? I'm going to subtract that. 178.57. Now, again, if you could do this in your head, do it in your head. We're not opposed to it. All right, now I realize somebody said, well, I can use my calculator. I know you can, but you should be able to do basic level arithmetic yourself without using a calculator. I know it may be tedious for you, but we want to encourage doing basic arithmetic. Now, what do you have here? Minus 178. 0.57. We have an answer key to check out. I'm going to borrow from the 7. That becomes 6. And that's 14. 7, four, 7 from 14 is 7. And 5 from 6 is 1. Now, I can't take 8 from 2, so I'm going to borrow from the 3. That becomes a 2. And this is a 12. That would be a 4. Well, I can't take 7 from 2, so I'll borrow from the 4. That becomes a 3. And now that's a 12. 7 from 12 is 5. And, and 1, from two, 1 from 3 is 2. So I get 254.17. All right? This one's simplifying. What am I going to do? Distributive property of multiplication. That will allow me to remove the grouping symbols. What do you get? 15t minus 10 w's plus 2 t's plus 8 w. Now I'm going to combine the like terms. Well, 15 plus 2, these are the t's, is 17 t's. And then minus 10 plus 8 is minus 2 w's. All right, this one's evaluate. 
My recommendation is to parenthesize the variable, and I'll do that for you initially. And I realize some students may I can do this without doing that. We're not opposed to it. But I'm gonna plug it in, and what do you get over there? One plus three minus five. One plus three is four, and four minus five is minus one. That's done. Let's keep moving. Convert 132%. I'll do that. 132% means this over here. And you want me to convert it to a mixed number. Now that's fairly easy to do. That would go in one and 32 one hundredths. All right. So I'm going to say that doesn't look right to me because 32 over 100 can be reduced. And let me take a look at that. I'm going to say it, it divides both of those numbers, 32 and 100, divide by 4. So it's going to be 8 because 4 goes in 32 8 times and it goes to 125 times. So the mixed number is 1 and 8 25ths. All right. There's many ways to do that problem, by the way. This one over here, I want to point out the way we teach it at Essex County College we believe is an efficient technique. However, you're free to do this in another way if you like. I'm gonna put the minor LCD down. What's that gonna be? Well, I'm looking at all the tiny little fractions in the problem. And what I mean by that, this is a fraction, this is a fraction, that's a fraction, a fraction. There's four fractions. Well, what's the LCD among those four fractions? It's simply just 28. So we're gonna multiply the top by 28 and multiply the bottom by 28. Well, let me write that down for you. It's 28 times 2 sevenths minus 28 times 3 fourteenths. The bottom, 28 times 5 28 plus 28 times 1 7. I'm going to do a reduction, and we'll do it one step at a time. 7 goes into 7 once, it goes into 28 four times. 14 goes into 14 once, it goes into 28 two times. 28 goes into 28 once, it goes into 28 once. 7 goes into 7 once, it goes into 28 four times. Now I'm going to do the arithmetic. And what do you get? Well, the first term on top would be 4 times 2, which is 8, minus the second term on top would be 2 times 3, which is 6. What do you get in the bottom? We get 1 times 5, which is 5, plus 4 times 1, which is 4. What do you get there? Let me go over here. I'm running out of room. That equals 2 ninths. All right, let's keep going. This is a division problem. And there's many ways to do it. I want to point out there's work over here. You can do that work if you want. Or you can do it a different way. I'm going to do it by long division. So I'm going to say 23. I'm multiplying both of those numbers by 10, by the way. This is exactly what you did in grade school. It would be 13.34. Well, 23 does not go into 13. Now, again, when we talk grade school, it's almost like nonsense, but you said 133. And what times one? What times twenty-three? We get you close to uh, one thirty-three. I'm going to say probably five. And what do you get? Five times three is fifteen. Five times two is ten. Ten plus one is eleven. Now let's just hope when we subtract the number smaller than twenty-three. I'm going to erase my carry, by the way. What do you get there? Well, you get fifteen, eighteen. That's not bad. That's certainly smaller than twenty-three. So we got a success over here. Then a four. Now here comes a problem. You know, what times 23 would match 184? And I'm going to say it looks like 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 2 is 16. And 16 times 2 is 18. And lo and behold, you get a zero remainder, which is good news because I'm done. And that's the number. That's the number they're getting over here as well. All right, this one is a, um, an arithmetic problem, and they want me to do that. And certainly the way you did this in grade school may have been different than the way we do it uh, or way some of your teachers do it now, but I would rewrite these things as just fractions, although improper as fractions. So the first fraction, common denominator, be, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say common denominator, denominator is 5, that would be 15 plus 2 is 17. Then when you get over here, well, 10, and you're going to get 17 tenths. Common denominator, 10. Uh, I'm going to build the first fraction, that's 2 times 17, which is 34, minus 17. And what do you get? you get 17 tenths. All right, reduce, simplify and reduce, we did. 17 tenths would be the answer. I notice they also wrote as a mixed number. There's nothing wrong with that, but in algebra, we don't have mixed numbers. So this would be seven over 10. In language, though, we do say that. We do say one and seven tenths. But in algebra, we would, we would never put a number down like that. We might put this down, one plus seven tenths, but we wouldn't do this thing over here. But there's nothing wrong with writing that down. 
That's a completely understandable statement, at least in North America it is. Let's keep going. And this one over here is um, a fraction. What's the LCD? The LCD is 12. Let's write this down. 5 twelfths. Well, that's got a twelfth in it. 2 thirds. What's the builder there? It would have to be 4 because 4 times 3 is 12. Remember, if you multiply the bottom by 4, you have to multiply the top by 4. Plus 1 quarter. Well, what times 4 gives you 12? That's 3. And let's write this down. The denominator now is 12. And what's the denominator? 5 plus, well, 2 times 4 is 8. And last but not least, that last term is 1 times 3, which is 3. What do you get over there? Well, 5 plus 8 is 13. And 13 plus 3 is 16 twelfths. What's 16 twelfths? I'll reduce it. That would be 4 thirds. You could also write as a mixed number, 1 and 1 third. All right, exponents. What do you get over there? Write it down twice. No, you don't have to. But I want to point out, if you're making mistakes, it can't hurt to write something down. What's the problem with writing things down? You may copy wrong, and writing it down is going to make it even worse. What do you get? Minus 5 times minus 5 is 25. And then I just simply count the factors. There's four factors followed by four factors, eight factors. And we do the y, three factors followed by three factors is six factors. Look at the k, and just don't say, oh, whatever. Make sure it's the same exact answer. All right, this one over here says, write as a mixed number. Well, it is a mixed number. It's three, and it's 0.124. What's that? 124 over 1,000. Now, that's a mixed number, but they say eh, it should be in, in lowest terms. Let's take a look at this. And I know this is difficult, but I want to write this on the side for you. Now, noticing that if I just go slow, I'll still get the answer. We get 62 over 500. You may wonder what I did there. I divided by 2. And I say I can divide by 2 again. This would be 31 over 250. Over 250. So it's going to be 31 over 250. Right? You could also write this as 3 plus 31 over 250. This answer is written right over here for you. All right? What's this one? Solve the equation. Simplify both sides. 5x minus 3x is 2x. Minus 2 equals 10. I would add 2 to both sides. You would get 2x equals 12. And then I would divide by 2, and you get x is equal to 6. All right? Let's keep going. James, dri James drive for 3 and a quarter hours at 60 miles per hour. How far will he have uh, driven? Well, it's a distance equals rate times time problem. It's a uniform motion problem. So the distance is equal to the rate. The rate is 60 miles per hour. And what's the time? It's 3 and a quarter. I'm going to write this a little differently for you. 3 and a quarter. By the way, the unit on this is going to be miles. Let's do the arithmetic. Well, 60 times 3 is 180. And 60 times a quarter is 15. That's miles. D equals 195 miles. All right? All right, let's take a look at this one. It says you're paid $8.75 an hour for 38 hours. Well, let me write this down. Eight seventy-five, dollars and you're working for 38 hours. What's your question? How much have you earned? So I'm going to write this down. It might look a little different to you, but I'll write it down for you. It's 8 and 3 quarters times 38. Now again, the way you do a rhythmic is up to you. I'm just saying that this is an option for you. Let me do 8 times 38. I'm going to do something strange. Some people see it strange. I'm going to do 8 times 30, which is 240. And I'll do 8 times 8, which is 64. So what's going to give you? That'll give you 304. Plus, now I'm going to do the 3 quarters times the 38. Well, 4 goes into, oh no, not 4, a 2. And this with 2 goes into 38 19 times. So what do you get? 3 times 19 which is 57 over 2. I know it's tough, by the way. Uh, 30 and 27, 57. And what's going to give you, let's see, 28.5. Let me just check that. Yeah, it's 56, 57. So 28.5. I need to add those two numbers together. And what do you get? You would get 332.50. And I'll put a dollar bill sign on it. All right? 42 is 60% of 
what number? Gee, I don't know. Let's find out. What do you get over here? 42. I'm going to divide by 20. This would be 3 fifths of an x. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. You would get 5 times 42 equals 3x. And I would divide both sides by 3. What do you get? 5 times 42 over 3. Now, someone says, why didn't you multiply the 5 times the 42? Well, because I'm starting to see that 3 goes into 42 14 times. So what do you get? 5 times 14. What's 5 times 14? 50 and 20, which is 70. So the answer is 70. All right. Landlord increases your rent by 5.6%. How much will your new rent be? Well, your rent was 750, and then they're raising it 5.6%. So 5.6 over 100 times 750. All right. So, you know, what do you get there? I, I, gotta, I'm gonna, I guess I should do the arithmetic for you, right? So I'm going to say I'll divide by 50. That would be 2. And 50 goes into 750 15 times. All right? Let's make sure of that. Uh, 50, that's 500. Yeah, it's 15 times. So what do you get over here? 750 plus, let's see, you get 5.6. And then 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. I know it's tedious, but I, I, I hate to do the arithmetic in front of you, but I, I'm going to do it. So it's 7.5 times 5.6. All right, 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 5 is 25, and 3 is 28. I'll get my eraser out and get rid of the carry. Let's do the 7 now. So 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 5 is 35. 35 and 4 is 39. 0. That's a 0. Carry the 1. 12. It looks like $42, right? Yeah, yeah, $42. So it's 750 plus 42, which is 792. All right? Okay, percent Regular sales for 560 is on sale at 40% off the regular price. What is the sale price of the television set? Well, the way I like to do it, it's 560, and I would like to say they've discounted it by 40%. So really what you're doing is you're paying 60% of the price, which is 0.6. Let's go through the work, and I'll write the work down for you, and I'll do it on the side for you, but you know, six times 560. You notice I'm not putting down 0.6. I'll just do this over here, zero, 36, and let's see, five times, uh, six times five is 30, 33. So what's gonna be 300? and $36, all right? Let's see if there's any other questions. Yeah, there is, there's more questions. These are decimal problems. So I'm gonna add 2.52 to both sides. I wanna write down the arithmetic for you. And it's 2.520 minus 2.233, right? I got a bar from the two. This should become a 1. This becomes 10. That's 7. I'm going to borrow from the 5. That becomes 4. This becomes 11. 3 from 11 is going to be 8. 2 from 4 is 2. And what do you get over there? You get uh, 0. So what do you get over here? Let me write this down for you. 4.1x is equal to 0 0.287. Well, i got more work to do. And I'll tell you what the work is. I have to divide both sides by 4.1 now. Let me write that down for you. 41, yep, multiplying by 10, and you get 2.87. Put the decimal point there. And I'm kind of looking at it, and you know, it doesn't go into 2, doesn't go into 28. Then I got a problem. What times 41 would give you 287? That looks like, I don't know, what would that get? That's 7, right? Let's see, let's see if that's 7 uh, times 1 is 7, 7 times 4 is 28. This worked out beautiful. What's that going to be equal to? 0 0.07. And again, these answers are being listed for you in the notes over here. This one says translate. I will do that. It says, when I'm reading that, I'm reading this over here. And I'll translate. It says the difference, that means subtraction, between twice a number and five. I translate. Oh, I'm sorry. There's something else. I didn't read that. Let me let me erase that. I didn't I didn't read. And that's, that's a problem. Sometimes you... You don't read and you, you just simply stop reading and you think it's all I said. They said more than that. They said the difference between twice a number 
and 5 is 30. I got the equation. Now what I'm going to do is going to solve it. How do you do that? Add 5 to both sides. You get 35. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And that's 35 halves. Actually, I prefer the answer to be left that way, but I realize some students may want to change that into either a mixed number or a decimal. The decimal number would be, let's see, that would be 17.5. If you're going to write a mixed number down, that would be 17 and 1 half. I actually prefer this number over here for algebraic reasons. Negative exponent, what do you get over here? 1 over 3 squared. What's 1 over 3 squared? 1 ninth. All right. Okay, so I think we're up, up there. And let me just, uh, let me do it for you. So what do you get? Minus 4t squared plus 3t minus 6 minus t squared minus 5t plus 1. Let me add that together. You get minus 5t squared minus 2t minus 5. Mistakes can happen. And that's why we really encourage you to look at the answer key. And I'm making sure I'm getting each of those three terms. And I've got it. All right? So we're done. And that's good news. So what we're going to do is we'll start the course. And again, when I'm starting the course, what I mean by that, you know, certainly we'll go to the next section. And I, I, we'll do linear equations. And for the most part, it's the same material that you had in 092. And we'll, we'll proceed through the notes page by page. What I mean by that, the next time we come back, we'll be going through this material over here. You'll see me do examples, and then there'll be problems for you to work on. Right? What does that mean? There'll be homework for you to work on, and we hope you want to do that. We hope you want to get better at this, and also if you struggle with something and you need help with it, I want to encourage you to come by during office hours. Thank you very, very much for paying attention.